Hi, it's me, Brady. Welcome, welcome back. We're here fireside in the woods here and we just finished lighting this scene, which I want to talk about. But before we do that, I want to say this video is one, sponsored by our friends at Frameset, and two, please be friends with the subscribe button. It would make me happy. So, lighting a night scene like this in the woods. It gets difficult, especially with night exteriors. It's one of the things that's been scaring me for a long time. But I wanted to do this as just kind of like a little exercise. Now, night exteriors are hard for two different reasons. One of them, we're working from a black blank slate canvas with no light to work our way up. So it takes a little bit more equipment, a little bit more lighting to make work. And also there's the issue of power. There's no outlets in any of these trees. So you're limited to either battery, power lights, uh, a generator, which can be loud if you've got audio, or one of the aperture EcoFlows, which doesn't get smoke in your eyes like this fire does, but it is a pretty cool thing that we're gonna use tonight. So let's backtrack to the beginning of the night to where we started with this setup and kind of work our way back to where I'm at right now. And the camera setup that we're using is my trusty old Sony FX3 and we'll just use Sony glass like a 1635 or a 24 to 70. And on that we got a uh, Tiffin black pro mist filter as well. And uh, the format of how I want to do things is start with an establishing shot, like a super wide, let the viewers know where we are. And then I want to move into a tight and kind of work with some mediums and close ups. And I'm doing that because starting with the wide, once we move into the tight, we already know where the lights are going to be. We already know where everything is going to be. So when we move in, we can just polish it off and move the lights in closer as we move in. So let's go ahead and start with the wide shot right now. And then we'll, you know, get to going. First light I want to add here is some light to bring up the level in the woods, in the, in, uh, on the trees, on the leaves, bring in some sort of exposure because right now it's completely black. And I want a big source and I want a far source, kind of motivated off of the moonlight. So I want it to be kind of cool and hard and specular kind of as the moonlight would be. So I'm gonna take this stand here. I'm gonna start to work to maybe put like a 1200D up because I know it's gonna be bright. My goal for this is to have this light source far. The further away it is, the more natural it feels because the moon is far away. And also if it's further away, it's gonna be casting on more of the scene. More trees, more branches, giving us more depth in the frame. So looking at the framing right now, we've got a little foreground elements to the trees. I just kinda of wanna draw the eye into the image, right? And I've got this light kind of playing as the moonlight and it's, it's pretty bright, it's pretty hot right now, but I wanna bring in a lot of level. Now one thing that I did to kind of save battery power, since I'm on the FX3, I brought the ISO up to 12,800 because that's the second base. You can see that if it were to be at 800, it's pretty darn dark. I think the light's at like 30% right now. We could bring that higher, but I wanna save battery. So I say it's clean enough. We bring it up to 12,800. I think it looks pretty good. I'll look at this a little bit more, but I think the next light that I wanna add is maybe some sort of, uh, I might add a light in the tent just to add a glow to the tent. So let's go ahead and see what we can do to add something in there. I've just got an Amaran PT4C tube, and I've got this still like a deep tungsten. I want to keep this warm world going on. Just get some sort of cozy light going on into this tent. And we'll just hop on in here. And again, I don't know what this looks like on camera, but I'm going to assume that if I just put this face down here, close it up, it'll give a nice glow to the front side of this tent. So the frame is starting to look you know, in the world of where I want it to, but I still think that there's a lot of dark, a lot of emptiness, a lot of negative space. So I, I framed up my camera to where I've got a little bit of this tree as the foreground that you can see. And I just wanted to, you know, add a little pop of that. Almost like I'm adding a rim light and add a little bit of attention to it. I don't want to light it full on and make it like really bright, but by putting a little light behind it, probably like an MC like this actually, It'll just create a little like edge around all of the leaves, just adding a little bit more foreground, a little bit more dimension to the scene. And I think I just want to take an MC Pro, something very small, and just come like kind of continue that 1200D that's over there and just light these. You can see that like, this might even be too bright. I might bring the exposure down, but you can see what it's doing over there. Just creating a little bit of level on the trees. So maybe I'll bring that, what is this at? This is at uh, 4%. <laughs> Let's bring that down to like, maybe 1.5%, something really low and small. There we go, I like somewhere in that world. So I'll throw this on a stand and uh, keep moving forward. I think we can get this wide shot. I'm pretty happy with it. I wanna see what it looks like. So for this wide, I'm kind of, I'm pulling back a little bit. My tendencies are to like add more lights and make it better and be, like, you know, add, keep adding. But I think I wanna let the fire drive a lot of the lighting in the scene. So between the moonlight and the fire, 
and then just giving a little bit of glow on the tent. I think that's all that I want to do for this. And then once I get this wide shot, I want to move in and start to, you know, shape the light a little bit more. Maybe I'll use that moonlight as a rim light and move it around, or maybe I'll soften up some light and augment that fire or just work with it. I'm not really sure exactly what I want to do, but I'm pretty happy with where the wide is at. Let's go ahead and uh, move in onto the tight. <sighs> Why don't we take a seat and talk about the sponsor for the day, Frameset. Now, if you don't know what Frameset is, Frameset is an online platform that's just got an abundance of reference images from movies, from music videos, from commercials that are great for either looking up for inspiration for your own projects. Say for this, I can go on and look for a campfire scene or you can use it to put together reference images for a shot deck for something that you're going to be showing to a client. Now Frameset makes it really easy for you to go in and select all of these different filters to really refine your search and get you exactly what you need. Now you can use Frameset for free so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave this link down below for you to go ahead and sign up for Frameset but now that we know you know the inspiration thanks to Frameset for the scene why don't we go back into lighting it. So I want to move in for like a medium uh, or I might even do a full shot or something uh, just a little bit more uh, pushed in from the extreme wide. Don't know where I want to frame yet. What I'm going to do is just roll my camera and just start to move around. And I know I want to, I know I want to shoot somewhere around 50. I've got a zoom on right now, so I'm just going to kind of rock in and out of that and start to get maybe some foreground elements. And I can start to see that like the fire could act as some sort of foreground. See, uh, a lot of the times I do this and I just kind of look around and I'm kind of looking for different compositions that work, especially when I'm doing on the fly shoots like this. Oh, maybe I'll go from right here. Oh, I like this actually. So I like this shot of them talking. I'm gonna throw this up on some sticks and I definitely gotta make some changes to the lighting. Right now, our original 1200D, that moonlight is super bright it's almost front lit and uh i really don't want that look i kind of want like an edge light moonlight for this so i might work with moving it around and then see how i can add in a little bit more light from the tent as well okay so i moved the i moved the 1200d that was originally over there and i i want to go for more of an edge light so i mean this might be a little hot because we're exposing or you guys might get a little dark but i want to start to bring it into that direction over there just creating a little bit of a, like a side edge light but my goal is to eventually bring this up higher and shoot it through the leaves so it's not just like a really hot spot on the dirt. I wanna break this light fixture up through the leaves as if like the moon is shining through a lot of the leaves. And this is gonna be doing the same thing as on the wide, but I'm just moving things around and polishing it off as I move into some tighter shots. Coming up. There we go. Okay, so we've got the second shot here. That rim light is really starting to do its job. That 1200 that we put over there, Again, we could have used like a 60D, it's at 1%, so <laughs> misjudgment on my part. But essentially, it's, the, the goal of this is to just create a little bit of an edge light, take them out from the background, add a little bit more dimension, and it also lights up some of the trees that we see in the background. So that's doing its job, but it feels a little bit empty. What I might do is try to augment more of this tent light that's over there and bring in a soft, uh, warm source coming in from frame left, just to bring them out a little bit more but not too much. I really want to work with the shadows here. I'm happy enough with it. We're running out of time. We're running out of firewood. We got plenty of battery. What I did differently is add in this 300C that's right over here. So the Amaranth 300C with a soft box, I just wanted a very soft side light coming. And honestly, it's too bright. It's at 1%. It's way too bright for the 12,000 ISO. Um, but I just wanted this very soft light coming from behind. So I put a light dome 150 on it five foot light dome and then uh, we had it set to 2500 Kelvin and I used a green shift just to account for the green tent that's over there as well just to match those up make it look like it's coming from the same spot. I'm kind of letting the fire drive a lot of this exposure and then just adding in light where I need it like with the moonlight in the background the edge light and uh, the soft source and that's pretty much it so I think the last one I want to end off on is a polished off shot. Their face is talking let's cut in to a medium cut in tight soften the light up and finish on that. So the first thing we did, we just moved that 1200D around further. I'm just keeping kind of the name of the game here is just rim light with that moonlight. We're just having a backlit relative to our scene, breaking the rules of continuity as far as light direction just a little bit, but the moon is way up there. I think it passes. And then the one other light, that 300C that we had with the softbox over there, I was like, I was looking at the shot when it was just like this. And I was looking at the scene and I was like, the fire's not given enough level. So I saw the 300C that was over there and I was like, all right, let's try things. Let's just turn it on and see if it's giving us any sort of dimension. 
And I think it is, it's just giving a little bit more side light onto her face as we're looking at her. And it's kind of motivated off of the tent there. So I'll probably move that around just a little bit more, maybe have it come a little from the side. But I'm really happy with the fire driving a lot of the exposure here and working with the moonlight, having a little bit more soft ambience and calling it a day. So we just finished the scene. We got a handful of shots here. And I think the name of the game was using that 1200D as our moon. Ad adding in a rim light, an adding in some edge light, filling in the background of the forest and just getting some room tone and then just augmenting it with a few different light sources. But nighttime exteriors are hard, man. You've got a big canvas back there to light and you kind of have to ask yourself how much or how little you want to light to it and dial it in and it really just makes you want to pull your hair out sometimes. But I'm happy with the images we got, at least through my camera. And that's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, be friendly with the subscribe button, the like button, whatever. Send it to your friend, your mom, whoever you think would enjoy it. And uh, I don't know, I'll see you in the next video.